Hi, everyone. I'm Chris Howard. Welcome to Top of Mind. Just a reminder, these sessions that I'm doing are really meant to represent what is on my mind, what is top of mind. But especially in my role as Global Chief of Research for Gartner, my role is to help set the research agenda for the company. What are the things that we should be talking about? What are the topics that are emerging that are worth us investing in from a research point of view? Uh, and so what's on top of mind for me right now, this time of year, which is the fall, in case you're watching this as a replay, is our content planning for 2024. Our teams are, are right in the midst of figuring out what do we plan for our roles, what's the content we need to produce, and so on. So I wanted to give you just a little bit of inside knowledge about how we do that, but also these are techniques that you can use yourself as you're thinking about what to, you know, th the future and what you should be thinking about and investing in. The three topics here are convergence, catalyst, and context. And I'll, there's a bonus at the end that I'll get to. But let's start with convergence. So convergence is the idea that there are trends that exist all the time, kind of parallel to one another. And then occasionally they come together in a way that creates uh, an exponential value because they have combined. Now, about a decade ago, we were talking a lot about this convergence of mobile, social, cloud, and data. And these capabilities coming together to create entirely new types of experience that were data rich and connected people together uh, and were able to scale because of cloud computing and so on. So that's a, an interesting example of the convergence of trends. One that might be happening now is a convergence of, say, mixed reality and IoT, knowledge graphs and, and AI. Mixed reality is the combination of virtual reality or augmented reality so the interaction in a, in a quasi-digital, fully digital, or a hybrid digital way with the physical environment around you. So imagine, and this is a case I've used before, you're a technician maybe working on an airplane. So you have both the physical environment, but you have an overlay of the digital environment, so information about the, you know, the equipment that you're working with. But maybe that is also using a knowledge graph, which connects you to the knowledge of other technicians that have worked on similar aircraft, perhaps, and then AI being used to make sure that you're getting summarized and really effective information. So that's a convergence of trends, each of which on their own uh, are mature enough to actually play in this convergence. The second idea is around catalyst. So we've just experienced a really powerful one in that there were sets of trends that were together, conversational interfaces, machine learning, uh, neural networks, uh, GPUs for compute. And then the catalyst that kind of made all of these usable suddenly was ChatGPT. And we've spent you know, most of this year talking about ChatGPT and generative AI. That came suddenly to our attention using because there was a catalyst that suddenly made it useful. And I was thinking about when does this happen again? maybe at the same kind of disruptive level. And thinking back in history to mathematics, say when the quadratic equation was discovered uh, to solve really complex algebraic um, uh, problems. The way that that worked is there were multiple parties around the world working on it sort of at the same time, and then the solutions started to appear around the same time. Hard problem, people coming at it to, you know, separately, and then having a solution emerge. Same thing happened with the COVID vaccine, separate people working on it, eventually coming together and getting a solution that comes. I think one of the next big times that's going to happen is with quantum computing. There are a number of ways of doing quantum simulation right now, but there are hard problems in the quantum space itself having to do with a chemistry, essentially, that eventually will get solved, and I think not too long from now. And that will be one of those catalyst moments where suddenly this thing that seemed ephemeral becomes suddenly useful. Now, you need to pay attention to things like that, because unlike ChatGPT, which simply created this explosive burst of, of creativity, when this happens with quantum, things that are true today will become obsolete. So it's really important to be thinking ahead towards that and make sure that you are prepared for that catalyst to happen. So we've talked about convergence and catalyst. The third C I want to talk about here is context. And in this short little section, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how I think about this in Gartner terms, but how also you should be thinking about it for yourself. So context exists at different levels, and where I start is at the macro global level. And we have a couple of deliverables where we look at this. One of the significant ones is called tapestry, where we look at different types of trends like tech and political trends, social cultural trends, economic, and so on. 
and trying to understand what's happening in the global context that's going to affect enterprise strategy. A good example of that would be continued conflict in Europe, uh, would be geopolitical tensions in the South China Sea, for example, uh, where there's a potential of things happening and or maybe not. And so there's, there's a lot of sort of strategies, option-based strategies being created in case any of these situations become something that an enterprise has to react to. Uh, the other types of things we look at, of course, are regulatory, so regulations changing around privacy, for example, in the context of AI, the economic situation generally, which is very uneven depending on where you are in the world. So if you're a global co- corporation, you're having to function with all of these kind of variances. So we look at that, and it feeds into our context. A couple of other things that we do more at the enterprise level is we study what boards of directors are thinking, but also what CEOs are thinking, or the equivalent in, in public sector. And this gives us a sense of what's likely to become an initiative. So what Gartner does is we serve different, very specific roles at the C-level. So CIO, CFO, head of HR, head of risk, supply chain, those types of roles. And so if I can understand what an enterprise is thinking of its priorities at the very top level, those are likely to become projects for those roles that Gartner serves. So it gives us a bit of insight into the future. Then at the role level, what we do is we actually are constantly interviewing and sensing what is important to those roles now, but also in the future, and extrapolating that from that to figure out what should we cover. Uh, So for example, AI relative to the CFO is something we're watching really closely. It may be that generative AI for the CFO is not the most important thing, but actually AI for the finance function is extremely important, especially in a tighter economic environment. So we're using the economics um, shaping, we're using the CFO as a role, and then using AI as well, how does that role become more effective, productive, cost productive, and so on. And so that gives you a bit of a sense of how I think about going from the global context to the enterprise context to the role context. So I've taken you through convergence, which is trends that are parallel to one another that suddenly come together. Talked about catalysts, so something happens that actually forces those trends to come together very quickly, like the ChatGPT instance. We've talked about context, which can be global or enterprise context or role context. But let me give you a bonus, and I couldn't think of another C. This is just like the farther out future and the ways that we think about that too. So as a research organization, there's value, of course, in being in the moment, what are people really doing? But I have a part of my team that actually is looking much further out, in some cases, 30 years out, 50 years out, or even maybe an impossible future out. There are techniques called future casting or back casting, whereas, whereas you actually set kind of a line out in the future and say, okay, if this is the goal that we have, let's work backwards to that to figure out what we need to need to get to that. A really common one, which is also environmentally related, is getting to either carbon neutral or carbon zero or carbon negative by some year in the future. That requires you to take strategic steps along a much longer uh, time frame, maybe than we're used to with strategy, which typically is a year to three years or so. But that's very useful because you don't reach those longer term goals without stepping to them in shorter segments. Then way out, one of the things that we have done and we've seen clients do uh, is actually using something like a technique like storytelling or science fiction flash fiction, like thousand word science fiction essays, which paint a potential future uh, that you would react to. Uh, a couple of years ago, we did an experiment where we said, okay, let's, let's do some flash fiction around this topic of stories from planet B. So in other words, we had to move off of the earth and populate a different planet. What would the technologies involved to do that require? What would we actually be required? And along the way, you discover interesting stories like what if AI becomes actually very empathetic to the point where it has sentience or personality, so moving towards the AGI conversation, or other social or economic or things like that. Now, this seems really far out. I know it does. But sometimes you actually need to jog people's thinking by creating a situation that they haven't thought of before. Let me give you a practical outcome of that kind of thinking. We've seen a real explosion, literally, in the space economy. So the industrialization of space, it's actually becoming more commoditized to launch satellites into orbit and then to put compute in orbit. And in some cases actually start to lay out a supply chain for a voyage to Mars. So even though the science fiction, flash fiction stuff kind of pushes you way out, it forces you to answer questions about, okay, well, how do you iterate towards that even in in an environment as fascinating and impenetrable as space? I've wanted to give you a bit of insight into how I and my colleagues at Gartner think about 
planning for our content, but also how we do sensing and, and trend spotting and those types of things, stuff that you can use yourself. What I'm going to do in upcoming episodes is actually give you more specifics about the trends that we see, things that we're planning to cover, to give you a bit of insight into what's coming, and we'll cover those in future episodes. I'm Chris Howard. This has been Top of Mind. Thanks for joining me. Thank you.